of the materials required for this enterprise in Nigeria's environment. It is quite profitable. Nigerian producers invest almost half of their output back into the economy. Without doubt, you have used several cooking oils before, but one thing is sure, you have never experienced true soya oil. This is not your regular cooking oil, it is a cooking oil with soul. From our quality ingredient selection to blending, extraction and packaging, we took time to think about your health. Besides giving you a delicious experience, True Soya Oil boosts your immune system, aids your digestive health, and improves your overall well-being. For inquiries, mouth-watering recipes, and more, connect with us on social media. True Soya Oil. Make the choice that keeps you and your loved ones healthy. Making a name for oneself in a competitive job market is one of the biggest challenges. Why would a hiring manager choose your application from among hundreds or even thousands of others? Not just the qualifications you list in a single line on your resume, but also the examples you give in an interview or cover letter that highlight your strength can make the difference between receiving an offer or being rejected. Finding candidate with the right skills has reportedly been the biggest hiring challenge for employers during the coronavirus pandemic, according to a global report that gathered responses from about 3,000 business leaders. However, another 63% of companies claimed they will engage a candidate with transferable abilities like teamwork, time management or leadership and train them in the technical facets of the position. The top three skills that employers will be seeking in 2022 are as follows. Dependability. A company's greatest asset is a reliable workforce. Employers place a high value or dependability in their teams. Therefore, it is crucial to emphasize this quality in your resume. There are numerous methods to emphasize dependability in your application. From showcasing your capacity to be self-reliant and meet corporate goals or targets to showing your leadership on a significant project. While describing your day-to-day -day duties in your most recent employment, you can also demonstrate to a recruiter that you are a dependable employee. Among the behaviors that demonstrate dependability in the job are meeting deadlines, being prompt in your responses to inquiries, and volunteering for assignment. Clear communication is frequently a crucial ability recruiters seek for job candidates, especially since many businesses continue to undertake remote or hybrid work. The pandemic has made it even more important for us to be excellent communicators, ensure that nothing gets lost in translation because we are working in multiple locations and demonstrate empathy at this trying time. Along with listing this ability on your CV and LinkedIn page, you should show off your communication abilities in a real-world setting, either in your cover letter or an interview with concrete examples. Assisting with presentations, giving comments, and asking comprehensive questions during meetings are all examples of effective communication. When a hiring agent queries you, how did you handle a circumstance that didn't go your way? You might mention that you gave your colleagues an update in real time via email or Slack and then offer comment for how we could enhance our response moving forward. Problem solving. Due to the pandemic, we have all had to learn to adapt and be tenacious in the face of adversity. In the workplace where communication and collaboration can seem disjointed, problem solving abilities have become crucial. Employers want candidates that can think on their feet and are at ease coming up with original solutions to problems.
There is no way to get back lost time. Even the Christian holy book urged us to change the present because the days are bad. Everyone values their time as we all know. Challenge of establishing a schedule and keeping up with changes.
about this governor who is the outgoing has in his cupboard. Mm. Can we begin to push for a legislation where a, an outgoing governor decides to leave without imposing somebody on us so that whoever that comes in on the lawful vote of the electorate, that elected personality should be able to, first of all, start probing all the deeds carried out by that governor before his governance will take effect. Can we begin to push for such legislation? Uh, of, because of, it's very, of, very difficult anyway. Uh, of course, we, we can. But l let me tell you that most of these things can be done in disguise. These governors are very smart. You know, when they want to leave, they need somebody to cover their back for them. You know, and of course, project them if they still have a, a political ambition uh, to go after. You know, um, the issue again is this arrangement of zoning. You know, in a particular state, like what we are ha having between Obaseki now and uh, uh, Philip Shaibu. You know, so it's a serious thing because it, it, there's no constituency that go the governor or the outgoing governor will not have uh, any political figure that might uh, be uh, that fall, that might fall, fall in favor. Mm. You know, to succeed him. You know, so, but the thing is this, at the end of this, you know, I think there should be a kind of legislation, you know, that will come with in a, a strong um, 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 penalty, you know, for the successor and for the predecessor. Because if you look at what China did over the years, you know, I think they were able to put a debt a penalty for anything that has to do with corruption and an independent um, uh, uh, not these ones we are looking when at when you say when independent we, will it not come through the re uh, recommendation of setting executive uh, no that is what i'm saying that and it's no longer independent no no, no, no the, the, the problem is that the civil society organization okay. in nigeria you know who are supposed to be um very uh, um, uh, rugged you know, let me just use that word. I mean, what I, what I mean is that, you know, very um, um, decisive, very mean, very focused, you know, on trying to get to what... participate Yes, okay. you, you understand? Okay. Uh, these are the kind of people, you know, not the one recommended by anybody. I think there should be something we need to do, a policy that we need to do, that at every point in time, because this thing is destroying right. uh, uh, lives and properties in Nigeria with this kind of corrupt tendencies we are seeing every day. So I think by now, you know, um, we expect that Aerofi should respond to that. And uh, of course, if he did not respond, we expect an independent uh, inquiry uh, uh, committee to be set up to find out actually whether the governor is also lying or whether the, uh, there was anything like that, you know, because the governor himself did not give us, you know, um, a breakdown of what he had when he, he entered the office or there was nothing on the coffers of the uh, state government then how much you know liability you know we wouldn't have that information all we had was that there was foreign uh, uh, debt and there was domestic debt and uh, some kind of uh, contractual uh, 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 outstandings in that regard all right uh, while we end this conversation it is a, a very interesting conversation by the way <clears throat> Excuse me, because you know, it, 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 when you start delving into it, it, it uncovers a whole lot of other kinds of worms that we have, that we're having to deal with, yeah? all, all the way from Godfatherism to co corruption, uh, and it, it, it's a lot. The, the moment new governors took positions, we started seeing bickering and fighting. It happened in Imo, it happened in Potakot. We're seeing it play out now in in Kaduna when we thought we've seen the last of it. it, it it's a lot, and and it's speaks to how these men find themselves in office. It speaks to how the people that left office left office. And these are conversations that we're not ready to have. When you talk about civil society organizations doing what they are supposed to, or, or like in the case of China, putting a, a, a severe, uh, you know, penalty. penalty on these people. It takes a strong institution to do that. Do we have such institutions in Nigeria? And when you talk institutions, they are not buildings. They are people that control these institutions. Do we have 
people who are honest in their person to you know hold on to such penalties and make sure that they are carried out these are questions that we need to be able to answer for ourselves as nigerians before we can move forward but thank you so much michael thank for you. coming on the show today thank we appreciate you. your thank time you. I brand day break coming up next is Vita Bite. Do you know what Demophera is? It is painful menstruations for women. Stay tuned. Health is not just about what you eat, but also how you live. Now, Vita Bite is your guide to a holistic approach to wellness with tips on exercise, sleep, stress management, and more. I am Kitchen Chronicles and I'll be right back with the Know Your Meals segment. On this segment today, we'll be looking out four meals to try if you're looking to lose weight this new year. Number one on the list is vegetable stir fry. Now this is made with minced vegetables such as bell peppers, broccoli, snow peas, carrots, served over brown rice or quinoa. This meal is rich in fiber and vitamins from the vegetables, while the brown rice or quinoa provides complex carbohydrates for energy. The second on the list is tuna salad made with Greek yogurt instead of mayonnaise, served on a bed of minced greens with cherry tomatoes and cucumber slices. Now this meal is high in protein from the tuna and Greek yogurt, while the minced vegetables provide additional vitamins and minerals. The third on the list is grilled chicken breast with roasted vegetables such as broccoli, carrots and bell peppers and brown rice. This meal is packed with protein, fiber and healthy carbohydrates to keep you full and satisfied. Now the last on the list is baked salmon with steamed asparagus and sweet potato wedges. This meal is rich in omega you got three fatty acids from the salmon fiber from the asparagus and complex carbohydrates from the sweet potato. Now let's go check out some of these.
back. Now, up next is the food fact segment. back now I hope that has been helpful and you know quite a lot about meal planning now to my favorite segment vital talk I'll be right back now if you fall under the category of always being confused about what to eat when you finally decide to eat then this episode is for you let's talk about meal planning meal planning is a process of creating a list of meals for a specific period usually a week and making a grocery list based on those meals it may seem like a simple task yeah but meal planning has numerous benefits that makes it an essential part of a healthy lifestyle here are some reasons why meal planning is really important number one it saves time and money meal planning helps you save time and money by reducing food waste and preventing last-minute takeout orders when you plan your meals for the week you can buy only the necessary ingredients which can help you save money and groceries additionally when you have a plan in place you can prepare meals in advance which saves time during busy weeknights Number two, it promotes healthy eating. Meal planning allows you to choose healthy ingredients and recipes that meet your dietary needs and preferences. You can ensure that your meals are balanced and provide all the necessary nutrients your body needs. This can help you maintain a healthy weight, reduce the risk of chronic diseases and improve your overall health. Meal planning reduces stress by eliminating the need to decide what to eat every night. Now this is a major struggle. When you have a plan in place, you can relax and enjoy your meals without worrying about what to cook or what to buy, ingredients to buy and all of that. This can also help reduce food related anxiety and improve your overall well-being. Meal planning encourages variety by providing opportunities to try new recipes and ingredients. When you plan your meals for the week, you can mix up your routine and add some excitement to your diet. This can help prevent boredom and keep your taste buds engaged. Meal planning supports sustainable living by reducing food waste and promoting the use of locally sourced ingredients. When you plan your meals for the week, you can buy only what you need which reduces food waste and save money on groceries. Additionally, when you choose locally sourced ingredients, you support local farmers and reduce the carbon footprint associated with transportation of food items from over long distances. Now here's an example of how to go about meal planning. Number one, determine your dietary needs. Before starting your meal planning, it's essential to determine your dietary needs. Consider factors such as your age, your gender, weight, height, and activity level. This information will help you calculate your daily calorie intake and ensure that you're meeting your nutritional requirements. Make a list of your favorite foods. Write down a list of your favorite foods, including breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. This will serve as a starting point for your meal planning. Plan your meals before the week. Based on your dietary needs and favorite foods, plan your meals for the week. Consider factors such as convenience, cost, and nutrition. You can use a meal planning template or create your own spreadsheet just to organize your meals. 
Create a grocery list. So once you've planned your meals for the week, create a grocery list based on the ingredients you need. This will help you avoid impulse buys and stick to your budget. Now prep your ingredients ahead of time. To save time during the week, consider prepping some of these ingredients ahead of time. For example, you can chop your vegetables, cook grains or proteins, or portion out snacks into individual servings. Be flexible. While it's essential to have a meal plan in place, we're flexible enough to make some tiny, tiny adjustments just as you need. If you have an expected plan to so changes in schedule, adjust your meals accordingly to ensure that you are meeting your nutritional needs. Stick to your plan. Once you've created your meal plan and grocery release, stick to it as much as possible. Now, this would help you avoid overspending at the grocery store and ensure that you are eating healthy and balanced throughout the week. Evaluate and adjust. At the end of each week, evaluate how well you stuck to the meal plan and identify areas for improvement. Adjust your meal planning strategy as needed to make it more effective for your lifestyle and dietary needs. Now, to conclude all of this, Meal planning is an essential part of a healthy lifestyle that offers numerous benefits such as saving time and money, promoting healthy eating, reducing stress, encouraging variety, and supporting sustainable living. By implementing meal planning into your routine, you can improve your diet drastically. Now this is where we draw the curtain on the show today. I am Kitchen Chronicles and until next time, stay safe stay healthy and to have a great and lovely week bye and Joe, welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. It is still iBrand Daybreak. We're drawing closer and closer to the end of today's edition. And joining us in the studio right now to buzz it up on social media buzz is the beautiful, delectable, amazing Black Dome Crack. She's laughing. <laughs> Deborah. Hi, Deborah. You know why I'm laughing? <laughs> Josh actually attempted to do this, mm -hmm. and um, you really need to clap for Josh because he did an amazing job. He <laughs> 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 was really good for a second. I was like, ah, did Uche enter this boy? What's <laughs> going on here? Yeah, Josh. <laughs> I yeah, know. We had fun. We had fun. I we know. Had I know. Yes, we did. We did actually. I know. And I actually even think we're going to pull it off, but it was really beautiful. Aww. Yeah. We didn't miss you. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so you can take one month leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, let's go straight to um, our first story for today. The special advisor to the president on energy, Mrs. Olu, has said that the federal government reserves the right to pay fuel subsidy intermittently to caution the ash sheep in the country. Earlier, the International Monetary Fund reported that the Nigerian government brought back petroleum subsidies through the back door. The fund also said that, the, that Nigeria may incur an expenditure of around 7 trillion naira and um, should the existing fuel pump price cap and electricity subsidy be upheld in 2024. Now, the context of this is that people are saying that the federal government have actually brought back fuel subsidy mm. allegedly for the common academy. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's take a look at some of the reactions on social media. Ola said, "Wait a minute. Subsidy on PMS is back. Please tell me it is a lie." We are also shocked. The next reaction: You remove subsidy now. You you're back to subsidy, even paying more now. You floated in Naira. Now you're back to defending it. So what's the point of all the suffering Nigerians had to go through uh -huh. and still going through? Nigerians tell me is Tinubu not a failure? And a reaction from Chief Chocolate. And it said, just to remind you that fuel subsidy is back and Naira float has been reversed and is being anchored by CBN. Don't hand over a country to a clueless individual who forged everything about himself. 
Now that reaction, people are dying of hunger, but the federal government is using 90 billion naira to subsidize hard fare. Since it is a good thing, contrary to what you made us believe, then just bring back the fuel subsidy. And that reaction, so the subsidy is back, even bigger and bad, and we are still buying fuel above 600 naira. Mm -hmm. how do you react to this? I, I just, I just, uh, you know, the moment you read out that story, the in your intro, I couldn't stop thinking. Uh, what do they have against transparency? Mm -hmm. If you're bringing back subsidy, mm -hmm. you announced it when you were taking it away. Mm -hmm. Why? Why can you not uh, call media people and do another press release? And tell us that bringing it back. why do we have to i mean we, we understand that you are in a very complicated situation and we want to support but we cannot support what we don't know i don't know if you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. you know, i mean josh and i had the opportunity to talk about this uh subsidy being brought back uh, in one of the segments uh, a couple of months ago so it's not even new at least to me and josh we've heard about it before uh, i just wonder why they wouldn't do do things the right way mm. you know be up, up, up front and tell us what you're doing and make it clear you if you floated in Iran now you're not floating it again is that why dollar is suddenly crashing and you're telling us you did something else meanwhile you unfloated what yeah. you floated and <laughs> things are reversing you get why not just talk about it honestly mm. so that we will know whether we're making progress or we're retrogressing it's really unfortunate okay so you brought that brought back subsidy people are still buying fuel above 600 naira why if you are if you are if you did on Float the naira. If there is any expression like that, why are people still buying the dollar? Uh, the mm. dollar at over a thousand naira. It doesn't make sense. Just shut you On the inaugural speech by Alaji Tinumbu, he pronounced fuel subsidy was gone. Few months down the line, in April, we discovered fuel subsidy was still being paid for. Mm -hmm. Deceit. Number one. Number two. Even in the midst of the fuel subsidy removal. They are still coming back to tell us that they may likely go back. According to Punch, federal government may pay 1.6 trillion naira on fuel subsidy. Mm. And marketers foresee that the cost of PMS may rise by 900 naira per litre. <laughs> so why is this, my question is, why is this government, you know, having a knack for speaking through both mm -hmm. sides of their mouth? Today is something... Tomorrow, perhaps they might be reversing mm. or switching or transiting into another level. Why not come out and tell us, we are sorry, we made a mistake for being hasty about making pronouncement of fuel subsidy removal. Because when they, when they came up with this, they started giving excuses. And some other presidential candidate, they started mentioning names, had also the same plan to remove fuel subsidy mm. removal. So what's the issue? So what's the big deal? You have gone ahead to remove because you heard or saw in their policy, you know, document that they were going to remove it. So you Did you it also think own. in your own subconscious mm -hmm. that there should be <laughs> a plan, a framework mm -hmm. that will ease Nigeria through this? But you just want that because you were excited because of power. Now you've seen the multiplying effect mm -hmm. it has on various economies. Just the other day we were talking about why is Naira appreciating, yet the cost of um, miscellaneous goods are still, the, are still on the rise. Mm -hmm. Have you also asked yourself, has government reduced um import duty mm -hmm. so when import duty is on the rise how will you expect importers to now reduce price for you because naira is appreciated who cares mm. <laughs> all right um this is actually a very funny one the christian association of nigeria has called for a public apology from the federal inland revenue service mm -hmm. that's the firs following an easter advertisement that has ruffled features or feathers across the christian community the controversy arose when the FIRS, in a now deleted post on X, under the hashtag uh, FIRS Nigeria, shared an image of a point of sale machine accompanied by the caption, Jesus paid your debt, not your taxes. <laughs> now, the post has found <laughs> outrage among Nigerians, particularly Christians, who condemn it for its perceived insensitivity. Now, let's take a look at some of the reactions on social media. The first reaction from Tola said, For FIRS to have used that phrase, Jesus paid your debts and not your taxes, as an official Easter message is quite insensitive, irresponsible, and unwarranted. What a hopeful and disparaging marketing phrase to the doctrine of Christianity. If they have issues with the churches, they should take them on their legal 
on their legal entities directly, not to make fun with such a reverted sacrament. That's the foundation of Christian faith. And that reaction from Mayola said, it's good marketing, nothing bad about it. Not one thing. I loved it. The message is not any way an attack to the church. If you feel attacked, then you should do the right thing. Jesus paid all our debts, but no, the taxes. <laughs> pay your tax. And that reaction oh said, goodness. from Olad de Kupo, and said, Nigerians and religion. Oh. The same thing will happen when such is said to Islam. I wonder which of the two religions can tolerate what traditionally is always tolerated. We can do better when we separate the way we hold religion in esteem and celebrate God Almighty by love for humanity. And that reaction from Kyle Day said, What's provocative and offensive about the message, please? Didn't Jesus require all Christians to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar? Talking about payment of tax, please, they should relax and let's, let's be guided with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of things. We are not them, them. Mm. And that reaction, every Easter there, every Easter, there is a new one. These things are actually deliberate and targeted at the Christian faith mm -hmm. because it is hard to imagine the consequences of such if the other religion is at the receiving end. It can only come from the organs, and, okay, and that reaction, it can only come from the organs of Islam State. How would a sensible person put out such trash without considering the feelings and sensibility of the people of such faith? Okay. <laughs> To because you see, you just seem to agree with FRS now. Uh, but, 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 but wait now, let us let, let's even go back to the Bible. Did Jesus say did Jesus not say that when when that um piece of gold was picked from the mouth of the fish, what was mm. that money for? He said use it and go and pay our tax, is it not? Mm -hmm. Jesus paid debts and not your tax. Look, what was the problem he had with um what's that man that went to go and climb three? What's his name? Zacchaeus. What's the problem he had with Zacchaeus? He wasn't paying Please let's tax. be honest with ourselves. He paid our debts. He did not say we should not pay <laughs> our taxes. He said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. What who is Caesar in this conversation? He's a representation of the state. And you owe the state your taxes. You have to pay. I do see, I'm a Christian. You said you pay not, your tax. I'm not even going to see that. Oh, yes, Zoe's moment. Do you want me to give you my TIN number? Please, Go please and check. Not. I am up to date <laughs> with it. I have my TIN number. I mm. get the alert every mm. month. I pay. I don't know if you run a business, you should have your team. Do you have it? That is where it starts from in the first place. That is if your business entity is registered with CSC. Exactly. So please, let's stop being emotional and pay our taxes. Oh so gosh. where do taxpayers' monies come from? <laughs> where is the money they are going to use and do the all these things taxpayer. you are complaining about from? I beg, I beg, I beg. I beg. I all right. Uh, this... Um, caption here yeah. i don't think we should blame frs we should blame the communication agency <laughs> because they are the ones who come up with this kind of funny creative oh is it good goodness. for business oh yes mm. it's strategy let's even say that mm. but again i find it very insensitive because it has to do with my faith mm. right because you wouldn't try this with islam I'm I'm here. under 24 hours this entity would have been shut down they've deleted it now it doesn't finished. matter. It doesn't matter. So when you when you, when you <laughs> want to do stuff like this, you try to consider oh, people's feet. I don't know why for the life of me, the, the, the Christendom, as it were, have always been on the receiving end of things. Mm. And maybe because our religion teaches us to be very much you know tolerant you know we mm. don't tend to take offense have you thought about it as from the, f the fact that christians always feel like that they christians like, always feel like somebody is after them just a few days ago <laughs> someone who even i don't know if he's a muslim he was in one of these islamic countries he burnt the quran 24 hours after his corpse was found somewhere mm. someone put up a very funny cartoon about islam guess what the embassy I don't want to mention the country. One of the one of the embassies in that particular country, they, they killed the, the ambassador because of having to do a comic relief for Mohammed. So I don't understand. They should they should be more. So religion is not very peaceful. No, they say they say the religion is more of. Um, um, justice. Oh, uh -huh. so it's so, okay when people in so the Christian dom they say want to do it like, to Christians because it's a, it's a religion that preaches peace first. We we yeah. are the Bushkabash. We are not preachers well, of love. Yes. <laughs> Let's move on. Question.
Is it like, so it's okay when people in Christendom say things like uh, uh, salvation is free, but you have to buy a Bible. It's okay to say st stuff like that, but somebody cannot, you know, make such a very harmless statement on Easter day. Debbie, <laughs> Debbie is giving see, this. The scripture advice. says, "Buy truth." Yes, mm. mm. word. Mm. Please, after the show, you guys can banter Christian Islam. Please, let that, me. That one no concern. No. All those us know be your business. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a philosophy. <laughs> I'm not believing. <laughs> All right. So, for Bola accuses his wife of fraud, cheating on him with Pastor Tobi Adigbo Sorry, please. Can you retrace your steps? Which I will bite you. What did you say? For Bola. Bola, 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 Bola. accuses his wife of fraud, cheating on him with Pastor Toby Adigbo As in Toby Big Boy. <sighs> Toby Rolls Royce. Let me understand now. Toby is David's friend. Yes. Okay. Continue. <laughs> Why is it shock to me? No, I just want to be on that <laughs> All right. Um, still in his two Mercedes SUVs to finance Pastor Toby's lifestyle mm -hmm. and abducting their children. Now, his wife, Isle Dora Kayode, has been embroiled in a scandal involving fraud, adultery, and abduction. Shocking the nation. Mm. Now, despite being seven years older than her husband, isn't it deceived Kayode about her age at the time of marriage? Wow. Now, one year to the bus line, an associate of socialites, Daddy Freeze, and his partner introduced Kayode, or uh, Mrs. Kayode, rather, to Pastor Toby Adibuiga. Then it was alleged that Pastor Adigwega engaged in sexual affairs with Izini, who frequently attended orgies, mm -hmm. leaving home for extended periods. Mm -hmm. According to Larry Waju, Izini allegedly also stole two Mercedes SUV from him to finance his lifestyle and is still financing his lifestyle. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Did you say she attended orgies? Mm -hmm. As in O R G Y S? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Furthermore, she conspired with um, Welter, Ugo Chuku, and um, accomplices to transfer property ownership from Kayode to herself. Oh. And um, she also adopted their, abducted their three children on Monday. Now, let's take a look at some of the reactions on social media. Now, the first reaction said, Nigeria should make it a law now that any man who doesn't do DNA tests for his kids should face jail term. Yeah. Women these days are something else. Can't trust them at all. Another reaction, using your husband's wealth to finance someone else who's supposed to be your spiritual father. Sigh. And a reaction, having a spiritual father will get you nothing but a very <laughs> bad experience that you won't be able to share with anyone, especially if you're a woman. Face your family with your prayers, seek advice from one another. And a reaction from Junior and said, financing your spiritual daddy with your husband's money and sweat. Do that DNA test today. Get it done. And a reaction, Nigerian pastors, LMAO, just a way for Nigerians to legitimize their fraudulent ways with religion and finally pastor toby won't do such a thing mm. he has enough money to attract any woman he wants not someone's wife i will wait and hear from pastor mm. so i think I, i'll go with credo wait for what for pastor why daddy freeze never starts <laughs> he never do like this i'm what surprised i'm shocked sure <laughs> actually i've been waiting for him to you know they are welcome, they are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I actually believe the allegations. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie I've to been you. Waiting for I believe the allegations. The and this pastor Toby, they are, you know, they are the freedom fighters of Christianity. <laughs> and I'm, I've been waiting for him to set ring light and, you know, I, I was waiting. I really wanted to join that live if it ever happened. But we've not, anyway, Credo said we should hmm? wait a year for pastor. <laughs> Just there, are, there are two sides to the coin. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, one side. Let this uh, pastor come out and also. Oh, yes, we're waiting, waiting now. Uh, we're waiting. Three sides. So, uh, yeah, w one side is he who accuses. Mm. The other side is the lady's part coming to say her own relationship with the pastor, and the mm. pastor also coming to also say okay, what. Okay, the lady and the pastor happens. on one side. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. I'm just saying this because in the law court you must have a fair hearing for both parties so we do not just need to just jump at it because we've heard it from one side again <coughs> for people who are sounding religious here let me even make it clear because mm. sometimes because of our level of religiosity let me put it that way we tend to misplace priorities mm. in the hierarchy of things right the head of the congregation 
is the Christ. The head of the Christ is God. The head of every woman. The he husband. Didn't, he didn't say the pastor. Is the man. Mm. So I do not understand where some ladies will now decide to now leave their husband. Mm. Who should give them direction to now seeking advisory counsel from a so-called man of God. He hears from God. And then he becomes the mouthpiece mm. of God for you. Mm. Mm. Remember even the Christ, I think Apostle Paul once said, women are not allowed to speak in the midst of the congregation. If you need to hear anything, go back and listen to your husband. Mm. He's still telling you that the headship is recognized by God to the man, not to any man of God. So when women now start having so much, you know, soft spots for men of God in the name mm. of advisory council, a lot of things go down. Mm. And, I, and I blame people who want to allow their women to begin to get too close to the man of God rather than themselves mm -hmm. as men. Which shall you react? Omwa, um, it's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's plenty. Mm. <laughs> Uh, um, <clears throat> I, when I saw the when I saw the post earlier, actually last week, it's been a while. This has been now. God for a while. Um, I'll, first of all, I, I must say that um, I agree with Josh to a great extent. I mean, with the affiliations between women and their pastors, it, it has caused a lot of chaos mm. in the home front. Uh, whatever you're doing and you're not doing as a unit. The family is called a unit for true, a reason. True. Whatever you're doing and you're not doing as a unit is contrary to mm. the vows that you have made. To, like across board. Whatever you're doing, the moment you make that vow, whatever else you're doing should be done as a unit. At the moment that you do everything, anything you do is outside the unit, a lot of times it is chaotic. It is chaotic. And that's exactly what's going on in this whole uh, Pastor Toby Bakare saga. I am... Um, Saying that the woman, okay, one of the reactions said that Pastor Toby has enough money. Actually, believe social media at your own peril. If you believe everything <laughs> you see on social media, you are in big trouble. In fact, what will kill you is coming faster than what God has destined. If you're believing everything you see on social media, I don't know Pastor Toby personally. I don't know any of these people personally. I am hoping that, you know, um, we get to hear everybody else's side because Pastor Toby is unusually very quiet. He used to join people's matter. Not that the matter is on his head. He's not saying anything. Sure. It might be, it might be you get time. all the people that used to set ring light, ring light and wave hand. They used to do it every day, every day, every day. They have not done it again mm -hmm. in a very long while. So what's going on? We really need to hear from. And you know, I have a problem with that word abduction of the children. You know why I say that? It's not because I do not think or understand that probably the woman took the children and left. But you know, when you label some things with certain words it becomes something else it's entirely abduction, okay. from what it is it not. is it is what, what you is don't, you don't take your child away from the man the man is abduction so, so, the way it is. okay she took them she she yes, took yes, the now she took the children she took the children without the man's consent oh, of course no anyway, that's what abduction is now have you won't give out that name in the beginning, he off me really. I mean, with the names, with the names I'm here, it's not the names that we usually hear. It's, it's, it's uh, certain types of saga. You're not even. They see the one way we say that they even they go through the court proceedings, mm. to gain custody of the the, the children. It's crazy. That they, they go through these things, especially when it comes to marriage. Ah, wow. Okay, we're not doing this. Let's move on. What story? My bad dad, Joseph oh, Aluba, God. is in the news again. And then this time around, he has revealed that he wears his late son's outfit and uh, amid criticism. Now, Mr. Joseph Aluba revealed this in an interview with a TikToker. Now, the family's decision, Mr. Aluba um, said, and I quote, Mobad is my son and I can wear his clothes. We both wear the exact same size. He's my son. I can wear his clothes. <sighs> Everybody who has a son and cannot share clothes with him, that means that person doesn't love his son. He also claimed that since his son's demise, he hasn't co coveted his belong Mobile's belongings or outfit. Now, we may also question the motives behind Mobile's father incident um, on a DNA test, claiming that he pressured her and Mobad into having a child. Now, let's take a look at some of the reaction on social media. Wait, wait, before you get to the reaction, the last thing you said, 
Mobat's dad pressured Wumi and Mobile into having a child. Yep. And yet he's championing DNA tests. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, <coughs> day for yesterday, or was it yesterday, he came out to, if, um, in an interview and said, oh, he knows that Liam is his son, but she has to give Nigerians the DNA. Talk about bipolar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at some of the reactions. Every father doesn't do this. Your child's um, your child's dead, and you're here wearing designers and fattening up, and you're talking about justice for your child. This is too bad for you. My bad was really unlucky. And that reaction, maybe if he didn't allow every Dick and Harry with camera into his parlor, we wouldn't be here deciding and having an opinion about what a grown man should do with his dead son's clothes. And that reaction said, for me, this is bad optics. Where I'm from, children inherit and flaunt their father's clothes and other possessions, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And that reaction said, when you lose a loved one, you want to keep their possessions as a uh, memorab memorabilia, but never to get them because it would be too hard. Except it's a piece of jewelry which you always put on for sentiment. But to just carry the whole wardrobe, the buga, mm -hmm. or more this man, <coughs> this sucks. The final reaction, this man is becoming unbelievable. No father should be this happy about losing a precious child. What exactly is he flexing about? You're wearing your late son's clothes. Is that something to be proud of? Why is he even granting all this nonsense and childish interview? How do you react to Che? It's really appalling. You know, I don't, I don't have a problem with Mubaza wearing his clothes. If that is how he has decided to mourn his child, and that is what I want to believe it's okay <laughs> but you know it, it still doesn't make sense we How must we must say things the way it's, it doesn't make sense has it is, a, he has a child do you understand and he's, okay uh, he has a junior brother exactly Why are you, you, you are this boy's father and uh, this is not even me throwing opinion at where it is not required but since you people have brought it on social media you might as well hear what i have to say since this boy died We've not, we've not really seen you in a solemn state. We've not really seen you, okay, the whole uh, has died down for a while. You've not taken your time to go home and mourn your child away from the cameras and what everybody has to say. You've not given that boy that respect for once. Can, can, can this boy rest in peace, please? And it, it, it's just really sad, honestly. It is very, very, very sad. Just how do you react? First of all, we are yet to get the autopsy update as regards what actually went down. Mm. We are yet to see the, the Lagos State I government today, release the corpse to the family mm. so as to give this young man a befitting burial. We saw how he was exhumed, so painful, right? All I could expect, because I don't understand if it's a cultural thing, please, someone should please put me through. The last time I visited someone who lost his son, we took him to Ikoi Lom, you know, to bury him there. We told the dad to go with her. He said he can't. He can't stand the sight of his son being literate. It should be the other way around. He can't be burying his son. And we respected him. He mourned his son in the house while everyone took his son to the funeral to bury him. Now, the question is, why is this man in the news for the wrong reason? All if the actually, time. You are the biological father of this boy. You shouldn't be parading yourself in this level of disrespect. Uh -huh. First of all, was the last time I heard one funny story, he was trying to seize belongings of this guy. Mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm wrong, please put me through. The next time we are hearing him asking for autopsy, I mean DNA, DNA, and all of that. Now speaking, speaking when about DNA, you knew all this while yeah, when this boy was alive. You didn't call Do you all think Wumi, that's Bobad's um, wife, um, owe Nigeria a DNA? Do you think she doesn't? It's a personal decision. It's a personal and thing. It should be respected. <coughs> right. If Mobad accepted that child when he was here so and never we took had for an issue with mm -hmm. uh, fidelity or whatever, I don't. It's not our business. I mean, it's not anybody's business. And, it, like, and I'm saying, sorry, Josh. Okay, and I'm ahead, saying, please. even to the point of Mobad's parents, it's not their business. Mobad is married, has his own family, his own unit. I the think only person who should ask for a DNA is the woman. man. Is the man. That's uh -huh. why when in my last comment I said the one the only person a woman respects and sees as a god, a head over her, is a man. If Mobad had not asked for a DNA, it is not in the jurisdiction of the 
the father. But what Nigerians are Nigerian so blind? That boy looks I don't know like why we, The next other person that can God. ask for a DNA is Liam himself. If himself. he grows up and decides that right. he wants to find out okay. what this whole thing is about, <laughs> allow Liam to turn 18 <laughs> and give us a DNA. If right. And the man wearing the son's clothes, Please, I don't understand it. That man is alone. mentally deranged. <laughs> I blame very oh. dark man. The way the whole yeah, it's the truth. Actions. Let's say the he truth. He, he, started no, it. He, he, did, he started it. He started it. The way he changed the narrative, the narrative. from war, from the whole justice from Muba to getting DNA and not getting DNA. But in my opinion, I think it's I can't imagine what a twenty four hmm. year old who is actually a weed. Do it's going, it's through. going through. I can't see no no one that wants to be strong. yeah no one wants to be in our right now. Honestly. So I think for the sake of our sanity, for the sake if of our stay son, with social media for now. No, that's not even it. I feel like just get the DNA done. To be honest. Are you sure it will end there? Nigerians will say it will, it will the end there. Oh. It will end there. Positive or negative, they will talk about it and everybody will sleep. Yes, actually. That's Let us get angle. That's we can angle. see. For any time that you're seeing a comment, go and get the DNA. Your son is a bastard. It hurts you. You're not even over the fact that your husband left you at the age of 20. Do you know what is 24? You're only a widow at youth. 24. Hmm. It left you, you with a son. A widow at that age. So it don't see like you're doing it for Nigerians. I feel like she's doing it sanity, for her son please. and her sanity. So people would not wake up and want to call him a bastard. I don't know if, if, if the social media streets I really is wild. wish Romy will get the, the, the chance and what it takes to move. Let her just leave this place. She can't move until the. Oh, Actually, um, yeah. yeah. Everyone that was close to Mobile is a suspect. So I really, until I really wish she gets that court. opportunity to like get her life back because right. it's not nice at all. All right. So last week I asked the question mm. <laughs> It's about to go down the <laughs> And the question was, ladies, will you shoot your shorts or your team and wait for him? And men, do you prefer women shooting their shorts or you rather do it? Hmm. Now, let's um, look at some of the comments, some of your comments <laughs> that you dropped. Now, this is from Funke, and she said, I'm going to drop it here and there. I think that this comment, which you actually said as per traffic light. <laughs> 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 I know you're short for Freddy and he said she should shoot her shorts. I will then think about it. Be sure I am asking for money for shirts, oh, color, sure. my haircut, tea a small 50k. Ha, ha. A small price to pay for this hot cup of chocolate. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know your action from um Chile and she said, Oh I am team, I would wait for him. Shannon is going to let me shoot my shorts. Mm. And then reaction from Uno and he said, if I'm what she wants, she should shoot a shot. Who knows? I might pick up from where she stopped mm. and go rampage on her because <laughs> currently my only shot is on the money bag. Rampage. <laughs> rampage. <laughs> now Paul said, she must shoot though. I know the fine woman go Biko. But if she no one shoots, I go up and cock the gun. Polly. But that shoot, she must shoot her. Polly, she will tell the story. <laughs> Now, if someone says she should throw a, a grenade safe, hmm. most women don't know that guys and aunts aren't friends. For instance, I'm a guy that if you shoot your shot, I go like you go. Oh. <laughs> and the final reaction from Top Man Rose, and she says she should shoot a shot too, because now only money I did shoot like this. So, what, what's, what's with men and money? And when you ask them for this money now, they start to men and gold diggers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, shall you shoot your shot? I, I, I'm sure. I'm sure my people are like, no, <laughs> can never be me. See, eh? Hey, Jesus, give me bag of rice, so I'll be counting it one by one. I'll tell you how many grains of rice is inside that bag. That say. I'll come and shoot a shot at a guy. <laughs> Makagini. Why? <laughs> Me uh, kidding. George, do you prefer that women shoot their shot? I think Uche has been very vocal mm. about never shooting a shot. So it's not time. new. Thank yes. You. <laughs> so, George. Keep counting your. <laughs> counting to my food chain. If anybody like me as I'm sitting there counting the rice, the person should come and join me. Right. Count it together. Josh. It's actually very interesting to see that kind of experience from a woman doing that. Mm. Guys like it, especially guys. Do you like it? Hold on now. Uh, <laughs> you like it. 
Some, you like guys, Caribbean, some, you guys, like some guys welcome it, especially when you do it in a very intelligent manner. Uh -huh. mm. So how, well, what? Like what? Talking about a woman shooting, a woman has actually done that to me. And she did, that, she did that by sparking a question. Uh -huh. How, how, Josh, please? Do you mind I pay your bride price? Oh, oh, my, God. That's what she said. oh my god, I'm blushing. That's what she said. Boy, no, you are no woman at that. How is it bread price? Are you sure she's intelligent? No. How is it bread price? No, you know why I said that? You know why I said that? You know why I said what? that? She didn't actually just tell me, uh, okay, this is how I want. She just came in a very subtle way. You know, you know she loves doing this thing. And, and when uh, she said that, I'm like, oh, I think she was. Yeah. 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 So that even gave me the feeling to, okay, when we're going to having that discussion, I uh, we took it far. Exactly. But, but eventually we did. Did you know, she say, Josh, yeah. I like you and I want us to date? Like I said, you do it intelligently. He thought it's intelligently. Yeah. Yeah. Sure instead of coming now. to tell me, instead of coming to tell me, who oh, ah, Josh, I like you. <laughs> Do it that way anyway. Fine boy. If you do it that way anyway, I will like it. Let me even hear from a woman say that to me. I like it. It's up to me. It's up to me. It's up to me to roll with it. you know. I must. I like it. I like it. If a woman says that to me, I like it. Hi. I like it. And I welcome it just for I like it and I don't like it. He can't work. Well, you don't like it. I will never. I rather, I rather use strokes for different like points. I, I, I use my two eyes. I think you can't miss. Different strokes for different points. You use my eyes. Wow. Different strokes for different folks. Wow. I tell you for a fact. There's wow. a reason why God said there a is man no reason, my dear. would leave his words. And father and mother. And cleave. And cleave. That one a marriage point now. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why, why are we dating? Why are we dating? Calm down. Uh, Peace. Women, we we never see, women, we never <laughs> see men come meet them and they decide see to take that shot. Problem. Is it out of God's will? It's uh, not. Uh, so why are you quoting scriptures to tell me that because it, it has been kind of designed to Josh, go that way. The woman has designed a man, have a means of getting into that sense. A man is meant to so walk up to him. No. Watch your eyes and beans. It's just like saying a woman who has been single for quite a while, mm. no one is coming, and she decides to want to maybe be responsible to someone and decide to take a child to now, you know, have as a child for herself. Mm. You know, really because you know, say because she's not married, she should wait for her turn to get married, then get it it's not the same. Because all right, it's not, him, it's not Josh. I don't agree. Very, I don't agree different. with you. It's not the same at all. <laughs> Unfortunately, because a man must meet a woman, and a man tend to do it that he says it's contrary. Yes, cut your eyes and beans. Yes, I remove my eyes too. It's not the same, my dear. It's, 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 it's not working. There's no formula works for everyone. It's not one size fits all. Josh, all right, it doesn't work for you. Do it the way it works for you. As long as you're not going against the will of God. If you give me another scenario, if you give me another scenario to put side by side with a woman shooting her shot i might agree with you but you see the scenario of having a baby it is not and can but never you would say the right way the as god ordained it should be when two men come when two persons come together All right, we, 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 we have less than one way we have less than a minute okay you're not having right, so, uh, right, right, uh, keep crying we'll drink your tears it's a stroke for next week question all right so um question for next week you enter a restaurant and then you cut your partner on a date with someone else. Now, this person happens to be somebody who has been causing problems in your relationship or marriage. My question now is, do you confront them? Do you pass? Or do you just go home? All right, let me know in the comment section. Right. And next right. week, right. we get to talk about it. He actually said, his name is so man. He actually said, he called me then I was like, Daddy, <laughs> where do you get these controversial questions? So I think you should add co controversial to my name next time. Controversial, Daddy. Mm. I will, let me put it down. Let me <laughs> drop it down. You belong to a telegram group. <laughs> drop it down. No, just, I don't. I just. since they drop, I just think about these things from mm. conversations mm. that we actually have. Yeah. Controversial, <laughs> Daddy. Daddy. Controversial All right, Daddy. 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 That is mm. what we have today. Do right. this session on impeaching. I will think about it. Because the gospel speak to me first and then I would, you yeah, know. We like to say it in the language of uh, people. <laughs>
All right, thank you so much, Debbie, for dropping by. You're welcome. We appreciate your time. Uh, this is actually uh, a very interesting one. Uh, first social media buzz mm -hmm. I'm having since I got back, and I must say I missed it. If you, if you don't miss me, it's okay. I'm not proud. <laughs> I can lay down my pride and tell you that I missed you. Right. I did miss you guys. Oh. I brought a <laughs> break. This is what we draw the curtain on today's edition. We'll return tomorrow with another at 8 a.m. Until then, you stay positive. My name is Uche Zoe. And I'm Deborah Eze. And I'm Joshua Carter. See you tomorrow.